Hello, we are representing Cornell University Autonomous Underwater Vehicle, and in this presentation, we would like to talk about our power management systems, strategies, and development. My name is Andrew Tsai, and I am a senior co-lead on the electrical team. I'm Cameron Hare, a junior co-lead on the electrical team. So the power management system is sort of like the circulatory system for our submarines. However, its job is not only to provide power to all the individual components, but also to monitor the delivery of power and step in should anything go wrong. At a high level, the system is designed to provide power to the sub, ensure that each component is able to source enough current, last long enough to finish a competition run, and have little impact on signal integrity. In order to meet all these requirements at the same time, we design a number of specialized boards, with each board carrying out a job that helps to meet these requirements. Shown on this slide is the main power path within our EUV. The merge board reads the voltages from our two connected 16 volt battery pods, labeled A and B, and determines which one to draw power from. It then sends the same 16 volts out to the DC-DC board, as well as other noise insensitive boards and components, such as the thrusters. The DC-DC board shifts the voltage down to 12 and 5 volts, which are used by the power distribution board and routed to the noise sensitive boards and components. The noise distinction is that in order to preserve signal integrity from our microcontrollers and sensors, we use two separate power planes in our system, one for noisy components such as actuators and thrusters, and a plane that is isolated for minimal noise. The interconnectivity between all of these boards is due to the back plane, on which the circuit boards are mounted. Another key point to note is that the back plane and all of the boards mounted on it are PCBs fully custom designed by our electrical team. When it comes to our competition strategy, the power system is designed to reliably enable us to operate the sub for long periods of time, as well as to help with debugging through several means. A key part of preparing for competition runs is to have ample practice time. Although practicing in the university pool allows us to test and fine tune our functionality, the environment in the competition pool is completely different and presents a number of challenges that can only be overcome through practice. To this end, it is important that our power system and delivery is designed to be ready to run for long periods of time at competition and when we have practice slots. When it comes to debugging, information about power delivery is made available to the software of the sub, which allows for easy visualization. The AUV accommodates two pods that it can draw power from. The battery pod structure is as shown, with a 16 volt lithium polymer battery sending power through a CCON cable connecting the large front connector to a connector on the sub. There are several reasons for the battery pod design, especially pertaining to competition. With such a modular design, which can be quickly plugged into the sub without needing to remove any enclosures, we save a lot of time when it comes to testing and running the sub over a long period of time, which can require battery changes. Another key feature employing the use of these pods is the hot swap feature, which is managed by the merge board. The merge board is able to read the voltages from the two connected batteries and takes the battery with the highest remaining voltage to draw power from. This enables us to hot swap batteries. In other words, if one of the two batteries is reaching a low level, we can safely unplug it and immediately swap in a charged one without interrupting the power source to the AUV, since it would be drawing power from the second battery. As mentioned before, this is important, especially at competition, since we minimize the amount of downtime attributed to battery and power management. As was shown earlier, the power distribution board is responsible for delivering power to a subset of the boards in the sub. In addition to powering these boards, the power distribution board also has the ability to monitor the amount of current flowing to any given board. This not only acts as a form of protection against overcurrent, but also assists with the debugging of electrical problems. Through smart power management, we're able to disable specific boards, thus isolating the system in an attempt to pinpoint the possible cause of an issue. Furthermore, the smart protection against overcurrent alerts us to the board or components that have been shut off, which assists in addressing any issues that may be at hand. In addition to the safety provided by the software on the power distribution board, another precautionary feature used on several boards throughout the AUV are current limiting fuses. If a short or similar kind of electrical fault occurs on a board while the sub is running, fuses placed on the critical power paths will blow due to the, due to the high current draw. This prevents potential hazards from occurring within the enclosure and is an extra layer of protection for the boards and their components. 
The development cycle for our power systems follows that of the remainder of our electrical system. In the fall semester, all of the electrical members turn a set of requirements into a schematic for a PCV. After several rounds of design reviews and revisions, these schematics are transitioned into a layout that represents the final form of a board. Manufacturing files for each board are sent out after another set of reviews and revisions. When we return from winter break in the spring, each member populates their own board with the components that they have chosen and writes the desired functionality into firmware. Then each board is tested on the bench to check for mistakes. After the functionality of each board has been ensured, boards are integrated into the electrical system and the design cycle ends. To show our design cycle in more detail, we've included images of the 2021 power distribution board that have been taken at several steps in the design process. Here, we can see a portion of the schematic on the left displaying the microcontroller on the board. Schematic is the first step in the design cycle, where the electrical connections between components are defined. On the right, we see the layout equivalent of this component. This is the next step, in which the physical placement and routing of the components are determined. After the layout design phase, which involves multiple rounds of design reviews held by the entire electrical team, the PCB design is sent out to be manufactured. After getting the boards back, the next task is to populate them. This involves hand soldering all of the components onto the board, including any microcontrollers, level shifters, headers, capacitors, resistors, and other components. Since we do this process by hand, there is a lot of room for error. Components can be oriented incorrectly, solder connections can be faulty, and oftentimes things just do not work properly out of the gate. This is why we have a very involved incremental bench testing process for each of our boards. The bench testing process involves populating and testing key components one by one. For example, a board with a microcontroller would have the microcontroller and associated components soldered on first, and then to test functionality, a dummy program would be flashed onto. After that step, the next may be populating the components for serial communication, which we test using a custom serial monitoring program in our electrical team software stack. Such incremental testing would continue until population is finished at which point the boards would be flashed with their proper corresponding programs, written by the electrical member in charge of the board project. After all of the boards have been bench tested, our out-of-body process occurs, where they are plugged into the back plane and a full electrical system test is carried out. After a successful out-of-body experience, final integration happens, where the electrical system is hooked up to the rest of the components within the sub, such as the main subcomputer and thrusters. Currently, our newest AUV design finished in spring of 2021 and named Kraken, has undergone this process and is thus competition ready.